It's December 1911. The British government in India changed the capital from Kolkata to Delhi. Now imagine you are the governing officer of Delhi and the British officers, the people under you, find that there are a lot of cobras in the city. So imagine they come to you, you are their boss and they ask you for help. They are really scared. What do you do? I'll tell you what the governor of Delhi did. He announced a bounty. For every cobra killed, you get, let's say, one rupee. Substantial enough for people to take a risk. In return, they would get one rupee. All hunky-dory, isn't it? Problem solved. A lot of snakes in the city. You announce a bounty. Problem solved. Now, let me ask you a simple question. After five years of announcing the bounty, what do you think was the consequence of this decision? You have three options. The first option is the number of cobras decreased in the city of Delhi. The second option is the number of cobras remained the same. And the third option is the number of cobras increased. Now, if your answer is either A or B, think again. Because actually what happened is that by some estimations, the number of cobras actually increased by up to 10 times. That's what we're going to talk about today. What is now famously called the cobra effect, or in other words, the science of unintended consequences. Let's first discuss why the cobra effect resulted in actually increasing the number of cobras in the city of Delhi instead of decreasing it. When the government announced this substantial bounty, initially it was a very successful strategy of getting rid of cobras from the city of Delhi. But I'm talking here about five years down the line. What happened is enterprising people, and by the way, there is a community of people who actually made a living out of understanding and taking care of cobras. They're called snake charmers or sapera in Hindi. So these people, along with some rich people who could fund their ventures, collaborated and they created what we can call cobra farms just on the outskirts of the city of Delhi. These people started farming snakes and so they had enough supply of cobra snakes in their farms and so on a regular basis they would kill these cobra snakes and then send them to the governor's office and they would get the bounty in return. So it became a thriving business. There were many many snake farms on the outskirts of Delhi. Initially the number of dead cobras that were brought in for the bounty reward saw a trend of decreasing number of snakes. But as time passed, the number of dead cobras every month actually kept on increasing. And soon enough, they found about these cobra farms operating just on the outskirts of the city of Delhi. So the governor scrapped the reward. As soon as this decision was taken by the governor, all these snakes suddenly changed from an asset to a liability. These snake farms suddenly found themselves with a lot of cobras just lying around with no future expectations of any returns. So these snake farms released these snakes and the number of cobras actually ended up increasing instead of decreasing. And so this phenomena where an intended solution actually ends up making the problem even worse, it exacerbates the problem further, this phenomena came to be known as the cobra effect. A similar case happened in the city of Hanoi. The colonizers were French there and they did the same thing. They had a lot of rats in the city of Hanoi and they wanted to get rid of them. So they announced a bounty. Uh, they said, just bring the tail of a rat and we'll give you the money. Later, the officials found a lot of tailless rats roaming about the streets of Hanoi and they scrapped this bounty scheme. All these rat farms situated outside the city of Hanoi ended up releasing them and that ended up increasing the number of uh, rats in the city of Hanoi. So before you make a decision, think about the cobra effect, or in other words, the unintended consequences, wherein the solution actually ends up making the problem even worse. I worked in sales and marketing for IT companies. In private sector, the incentive of a salesperson more often than not, depends on the amount of revenues they earned. It doesn't take into account the profit margins. And so there's a famous example. I can't take the name of the company, but it's an IT giant. They would give incentives to the salespeople depending on the amount of revenues they earned. But 
a cobra effect is lurking out there. It may not look very obvious, but 80% of the sales actually happens in the last week of the quarter because it puts a lot of pressure on the salespeople. They give deep discounts to the customers just to convert the sales. Sometimes they even make forward sale. They ask the customer to buy in this quarter what the customer wants to buy in the next quarter so that the salesperson can fulfill his quota and get the incentive money. But it hurts the company. What happens is a lot of customers sooner than later come to know that at the end of the quarter we are going to get a big discount between 20 to 50 percent. So what they do is they delay buying things during the rest of the quarter. Each time the sales spike, margins drop because these sales are made at a deep discount. Now let's take another example from another big call center company. The managers changed the incentives of the call center operators depending on the number of calls that you take in one hour. So for example, if you can only take 10 calls in an hour and let's say the person next to you takes 20 calls per hour, well, he gets more incentives. The managers thought this way, our operators will try to help the customer as quickly as possible so that they can get to the next call. So the intended consequence was speedier and much more efficient customer satisfaction but the result was actually it increased the dissatisfaction of the customer. The reason was very simple. When the call center employees discovered this new incentive schemes, they found a way to register as many calls as possible. What they would do is, so for example, a customer calls me and I'm a call center operator. So what I would do is I would hang up on the customer as soon as I answer the phone, but it still registers as one call. So this way, the call center operators would bring up the number of total calls that they made in an hour. It's a simple trick, isn't it? You can instantly increase the number of customer calls. So initially, if you're answering, let's say, 10 calls, uh, now you're answering 20 calls. When the manager found that out, they had to then rethink their strategy. Let's take the biggest Cobra effect that happened in 2008. I'm talking about the subprime crisis that caused the world economy $6 trillion of lost GDP. But how did it all start? Well, what happened is in 2006, the house loan officers built their own Cobra farms. To increase the amount of loans that they could give out, they taught the mortgage brokers how to trick the system. So the house loan officers, they knew which documents to provide and which ones to leave out. And they showed these mortgage brokers the ways of manipulating the system so that every loan application the mortgage broker makes gets passed. We saw the consequence in 2008. It all came crumbling down within two years. Basically, we are talking here about unintended consequences. But why do they occur? Well, what I think is, at the most basic level, they occur because people who make decisions, managers, policy makers, lawmakers, people who are given the authority, the right, the power to make decisions on behalf of other people, what they do is they still suffer from linear thinking. Linear thinking means this is the problem, this is the answer to that problem, and the problem is solved. But we are living in a very complex society, isn't it? look at our economy, look at our um, friends network, look at the way we conduct business. Everything has become so much more complex that's actually absurd to think in linear terms. If you have a linear system thinking, there is a very high chance that you'll end up making a decision that has Cobra effect lurking around. So what's the solution? How can we avoid making these Cobra effect decisions. Now that we know what is Cobra effect and why it happens, I think there can be three ways we can avoid that. The first thing that comes to mind is diversity. Diversity is the silver bullet. Try to get the inputs from as diverse group of people as possible because diversity of skill sets brings in diversity in understanding the problem. So bring in as many specialists as possible to look at the problem and the solution so that they can give their expert advice based on their area of speciality, their expertise.
The second thing when making decisions is take the stakeholders into view. What do I mean by that? Experts, however good they are in their respective field, they still have a disadvantage. They don't have the overall view. So first take the subsets, if you will, and give them to experts, ask their opinions, ask how you can avoid cobra effects in the small subsets of the solution. The second step would be that you get the stakeholder, the people for whom you are making this decision, you are bringing this change in the way of doing things, take these people into account, ask what they think. More often than not, you might discover that these people have a better idea of how it works as a whole. So to get a view of how will it implement on the ground, you can take a view from all the different stakeholders. So you can have a narrower view and a wider view of the problem and the intended solution. The third thing, and I would say is the most important, is start thinking in terms of complex systems. Now, it's not very easy to change your way of thinking from simple systems to complex systems, but one way to start doing that is think in terms of short-term, medium-term, and long-term consequences of the changes that you're bringing in or the decisions that you're making. The short term can be anywhere from a week to a year. Medium term can be anywhere from six months to, let's say, 10 years. And long term can be, let's say, three years to 20 years. It depends on the kind of problem that you have and the kind of solution that you're proposing to implement. How the authorities could avoid COBRA effect if they were to use the three solutions that we proposed here in this video. So first, let's talk about diversity, specialists, the governor. Before taking the decision to announce a bounty, if he would have taken the advice from, let's say, a biologist, a cobra specialist, someone who knows about cobras, someone who knows about their breeding patterns, what are the months of laying eggs, what are the ways we can get rid of the cobras without even killing them, people who would do a financial analysis of what should be the amount of the bounty, Someone who could give you an input on how many cobras do we have in the world city right now. Someone who knew about the caste system in India, who would give the advice to the governor about this uh, specific community of people called Saperas, the snake charmers. Those experts, if they would have come in, they would have given their expert advice. So, if the governor would have taken the advice from specialists, maybe he would have figured out that people can manipulate it. Because then he would be alert about the generational knowledge transfer, skill transfer from father to the son, to his son and to his son in the Sapera community, for example. Or he would be able to find the amount of bounty that he could offer. Maybe one rupee was too high. Enough for the cobra breeders to account for taking care of the snakes. So that's step number one. Step number two, he should have taken into account the public. Because before the British came, before the capital changed to Delhi, Delhites were living in Delhi for generations. So how were they taking care of the problem? Is the situation as bad as the British officers were thinking or was it just a case of maybe some officers just on that specific day? They were unlucky enough to see as many snakes as they did, but normally the cobra density in the city maybe wasn't as much. So take local people, the community, into account. And the third thing is think about the short term, medium term and long term. Think in terms of complex system. A complex system is a system in which you think not only about carrots and sticks, the incentives and punishments, but also how humans behave, how we try to manipulate things, how we can apply shortcuts to benefit. So think about uh, the solution in terms of complex systems. I really believe if the governor had taken these three steps he would have avoided the cobra effect in the first place. But then hindsight is always 2020. So, in future, if you are thinking about making an important decision, you should always consider about the cobra effect creeping in. And I hope these three ideas help you make a better decision free of, or as much free as possible of the cobra effect. Thank you for watching. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share this video as much as possible. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.